I would die for them to adopt me. <laughs> like the they would stairs. love to have you. I would die to live with a judge, a DA, and then your sister's like a top-notch attorney. Too. She's a prosecutor. She's a fucking yes. prosecutor. Yeah. So breakfast at that motherfucking house <laughs> yes. must be like laws and no, they're references to fucking this. <laughs> and, it's not a breakfast. Well, fucking art to beat the mill. <laughs> The fucking uh, backhand slap motion from 1988. Listen. Like, that shit makes my dick up. There's evidence. There's objections. There's literally, yeah, you know. My mom was just a, uh, like a real estate attorney, but even just have her, being a kid of an attorney can be rough. Like, they, like they're, uh, and I can't imagine having it from two sides no. and one being a judge. Yeah, my mom definitely has, like, she's the cock and balls, like, for sure. There's a lot of, like, you know intensity and you know strong people in my family so where'd she go to law school at she went to law school um in san diego and your dad he went to law school here in los angeles no shit. yeah and they met here they met in the courthouse in las vegas holy shit yeah my mom was a tv news reporter and my dad was a prosecutor and he would um, pass her in the hallway. And he always tells us that he would see her on TV and say that he's going to marry that woman someday. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then she went off to law school. And I think they kind of like were dating other people. And then when she came back, I guess they met at a bar or something. And like he couldn't keep his hands off her, that dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, like court in Vegas must be completely different than anywhere like vegas is a, like a completely different place vegas is an insane like asylum <laughs> i mean i don't even know how i grew up there like i went back last weekend and as you get older you're, you know your hometown means different things to you and you can kind of put into perspective your childhood and it's such a crazy place to grow up if you think about it now as you were growing up did you, were your parents pushing for you to go into the law field um i think that was kind of something that was maybe like an underlying expectation people would always uh whenever i would see them out or their cohort they would be like oh are you gonna go to law school you know do you want to be a lawyer when you grow up and i was like absolutely not <laughs> never so you knew it already it i just knew i wasn't that wasn't for me and at all you got accepted into american university i i went to college um i went to three colleges what was um, the first one it was a small school in vermont called landmark college and it's uh for people who have learning disorders okay yeah and then i have adhd so i learn differently which is the nice way of saying retarded but i can say that i have documentation so um but yeah i uh, i went to a school that like taught me how to learn because i just learned differently i was always a creative person visual um and i just never i i went to a bunch of different middle schools and high schools i went to a lockdown when i was 17 where i graduated from in utah so i i my schooling was never um it was it was all over the place but you're very book smart i am emotionally smart i definitely have a book I, if i like if i'm interested in something i will become obsessed with it but there's you couldn't pay me enough money to ever study math ever again ever I could give a fuck. Yeah, you did what you did, and then you moved the fuck on. Yeah, like weed taught me math, like the math that I needed to know, you know. And how was American University? It was cool for like, you know, it was cool to be in our nation's capital. I got to see Obama get inaugurated. Like I was a part of, you know, a huge historical moment in time. But um, I was, I just felt like the dumbest person in all of my classes. I could care less about politics. Um, I wasn't inspired by it. I thought it was kind of like Hollywood for ugly people. <laughs> but I mean, no, there's whatever. But I just, I, it wasn't the right place for me. And I even had the opportunity to intern for Congress. Congress. I could have, you know, um, gone off and done something big with that. But I just was never, it wasn't meant for me. So you ended up in Lynn College in what part of Florida? Boca Raton. Okay. <laughs> For all the Jews. And, all uh, of them. And that's where you got your degree from. I got my master's degree from Lynn. Um, and uh, yeah, I stayed down there and I worked uh, in the hospitality industry. I always worked since I was 15 in hospitality. Um, and I worked in marketing out of college. And you got a degree in marketing? Yeah. A master's? A master's, yeah. In marketing. Mm -hmm. No shit. Yeah. And then when did you start smoking reef? <laughs> as soon as I pretty much left my parents' house when I went to college, 19. 
when I went in to Vermont. Vermont. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's. I mean, you have to smoke weed yeah, in Vermont. Vermont. <laughs> that's the place. Like everyone is on something there. <laughs> and then, when did you first decide to get on stage? Um, almost three years ago. Yeah, um, when I was twenty nine. Yeah. What made you want to get? Because you said you. I had tried to get on stage many years before that. I I did improv as a kid, so performing was never. Um, I was never shy of performing. <clears throat> I was always the first one in college who wanted to like get up and do my presentations. And I just liked being in front of people. But when I was living in Florida, I started going to improv shows. My first stand up show was seeing Mike Epps at the Palm Beach Improv. And um, I would see, I saw John Lovitz, Bob Saget. Like I had just fell in love with stand up um, years ago. And then it wasn't until. I was just in these like horrible relationships. I was working these corporate jobs out here that I just was terrible at. And I just knew that I really one felt purposeless. I felt like I was just kind of aimlessly roaming through life. I, I like, you know, it really spoke to my depression and just, I think I just, I was searching for that something. And it wasn't until I was getting out of a relationship. I was 29 I was living with this guy that was so toxic and my life just wasn't what I wanted it to look like. And for something, for some reason, just like stand up was like, it was screaming inside me. It was like, do stand up. And I had seen a friend, um, my friend, Sam Grody, she was a sorority sister with me in DC. She does stand up. And I went to see her at the John Lovitz club, that one that got shut down, um, at Universal. Yeah, at Universal. <laughs> and I saw her perform and I was like, I could definitely do that. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I ended up um, finally after a breakup, I just started writing. I went to um, Mike's. I, uh, yeah, I started getting on stage. Are you, uh, I don't know how to ask you this. Are you lucky at love? <laughs> Am I lucky in love? Like at love? You're lucky at love. Do you? Um, I have always. Do you attract fucking knuckleheads? <laughs> I've attracted you... a variety of men in my life. Some of them were men. Some of them questionable. Um, I've always been in relationships since I was 15 years old. I've always like loved having boyfriends. I've dated m people since I was 15. So I've had a bunch of boyfriends, I guess. I've had experience in dating guys. Um, who were all different kinds of uh, healthy and unhealthy for me. <laughs> now, when you broke up with that one dude and mm -hmm. you got into stand-up, like I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it was all part of a metamorphosis process. Yeah. It was all part of a, I'm going to stop doing what the fuck I'm doing and get into this. Like right. I got on stage in like June and in October, she told me she wanted to get separated. Oh, wow. So I walked, like, for four months, I walked around like, I don't want to be with this person no more. And everything sucked. Yeah. Like, everything just sucked. Once I got on stage, and here I am, 28, I'm out of prison, and, and I'm with this woman, and God bless her. She drove me to my first open wow. mic. She forced me, like, she forced the hand, you know. But it's really tough to explain to people. Sometimes at your, like, I got into stand up at the lowest point in my life. Mm -hmm. And then I got into it at a lower point. In my life. <laughs> and then I got all in at the lowest point in my life. Yeah. Like, the lower I got, the more I got into it. Yeah. Is that how you felt sometimes? I, my first year of stand up, I suffered like suicidal depression. Like I wasn't like, I didn't have um, a plan. I wouldn't actually do it, but it, it was in and out of my life my first year of stand up. I um, got out of that relationship that I was in at 29, started stand up. It was, I was working for Levity at the time. And my, uh, I was doing social media marketing for them. That's really like my my path into comedy was like I used to work at corporate, and um, I <clears throat> I ended up leaving that job because they wanted to bring someone in house. They got Rita from the Improv, let me be a bartender in the lab, and they don't give those jobs to like 
just anyone, let alone women. And like, I'm not a career bartender. <laughs> like I'm in the back looking up, you know, basic recipes for a Manhattan. You know what I mean? Like she really believed in me. And so I was going through this breakup. She gave me an opportunity at the improv. And I was also starting my open mics and writing and getting into stand up. And it just became like my I was like, this is what I'm in love with. This is this is what I've been missing my whole life. This is what this is my purpose. It gave me meaning to my life in a whole new way. We're going in like fucking Marie. Do you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.